before we start thinking about our own models and building our own models, we need to think about the concept of uh, stationary. So how do we define a stationary time series? What is a stationary time series? Well, stationary time series is one for which when we look at different parts of the time series, uh, joint probability density of that uh, of those different parts of the time series uh, will look almost identical, will be indistinguishable uh, between them. So let me show you this diagram diagrammatically uh, using a rough sketch. Here's a time series. If we take a window S and we move that move, uh, window S along, and I take, for example, a histogram of this part of the time series, of this part uh, uh, of using this first window, and I consider a histogram using the second window, those histograms uh, will look almost identical. Hence, the data is not the same, but the density or the probability distribution of those um, will look uh, very, very similar. Now, think about features of, of a time series. Uh, stationary seri uh, a stationary time series is roughly horizontal, hence there's no trending behavior. It has constant variance, hence it's homoscedastic, and there are no patterns predictable in the long term, hence it does not have any seasonality, any seasonal components. Here's some examples of time series that we can consider, we will consider whether these are stationary or non-stationary. Now let's start with these first two here. This is the Google closing price over 2015, the year 2015. Um, and this second diagram is the change in the Google price over the same period. Now, this first diagram, uh, we, we can see trending behavior in the second part of the time, in the second part of the graph compared to the first part of the graph. And this is typical with financial data where we have wandering behavior uh, of time series. And we will um, cover that in the next part, in the next video that, we, that you will see in the textbook. When we consider the change in the Google price, the change of a financial index, this looks stationary. Any S window across this time series uh, will give you the same histogram. Um, thinking, let's consider some time series where we have change in level or change in trending behavior. Hence, this is uh, strikes in the US. The first half of uh, the time series looks very different to the second half of the time series, this is annual data. Egg prices in US constant dollars. Um, the, we have trending behavior in the second half of the time series. So taking uh, you know, this window and this window will look very different. Uh, pig slaughter in Victoria, this is monthly data. Um, again, this change in trending behavior throughout this uh, time series, hence non-stationary. There's a couple of time series here which include uh, seasonal patterns. Um, this is U.S. house sales monthly data, uh, beer production quarterly data, hence long-term um, seasonal patterns are predictable, hence this data is non-stationary. Now this um, bottom corner, we have gas production in Australia, and this is a time series that is non-stationary in all possible ways it can be non-stationary. It is heteroscedastic, the variance increases as the level of the time series increases. It has a trend, it has a seasonal component. Now the last time series that we still haven't considered is uh, is this links trap data, links data that we've seen before. So we know this is annual data, hence uh, this is not um, seasonal data, but it is cyclical. So it's cyclical, it's aperiodic. We know that the cycles vary between nine and 11 years. Hence, in the long term, these are not predictable. Hence, this data, this type of data is considered um, uh, stationary. Now, uh, ecological cycles such as this are much more predictable and less variable than uh, the business cycle, economic cycles. Um, hence, with economic cycles, uh, you, you would not very often find data that looks as flat as this that will have some trending behavior. Hence, when we look at economic data, um, it is highly likely that the data will include business cycles and it will be non-stationary. Okay, um, so if we have um, non-stationary data, 
before we start doing any ARIMA modeling, uh, we want to uh, make this stationary. And we know that transformations from section 5.1 of the book, we saw that transformations help us stabilize the variance. So we can deal with a variance of a time series um, using transformations. Now with ARIMA models, we also need to stabilize the mean. And to stabilize the mean, we're going to use um, a differencing, differencing, which we'll see in the next uh, couple of slides. Now, just a bit of a preview with autoregressive integrated moving average models. We will make the data stationary, then we'll build models, then we're going to reverse everything, and then we're going to generate forecasts. Now, um, in this video and this section of thinking about stationary, we're dealing with the I, the integrating uh, part of this ARIMA modeling. And the action of making data stationary is differencing. The action of reversing that is integrating. And this is this is the part of the model that we're dealing with here. So, as we saw before, to identify um, whether data are stationary or, or not, looking at the time plot is quite informative. Otherwise, to do that is to actually look at the autocorrelation function. Um, and for stationary data, the autocorrelation function drops very quickly to zero. For non-stationary data, it it um, it decreases very very slowly. Also, for non-stationary data, the first order correlation will be uh, very, very high and positive. Let's have a look at an example. Um, we're going to look at uh, Google closing stock price in the GAFA uh, stock symbol, and we're just going to look at the year 2018. So let's have a look at the uh, plot of the data. So clearly, um, Taking different windows uh, will look very different. Um, and this is typical um, typical uh, wandering behavior of financial time series. So, and we'll talk about that again, I'll repeat in the next uh, aspect, uh, in the next uh, video that we're gonna record. Um, looking at the ACF of this time series, it's very, very slowly decaying. So. The first spike, uh, row one, or the estimate of that is close to one. And from there, it takes a long, long time for this to, to die out. If we look at the change in the price, so I'm introducing a new function here, difference. So I look at the difference of the closing price. So this is yt dash is equal to yt minus yt minus one. So it's the change uh, every day. Now this looks um, stationary flat, horizontal, um, no trending behavior, no seasonality. If we look at the ACF of this change in the price of the difference uh, in the close variable, uh, we see that, um, well, in this case, it is a, it is a very, um, very non-eventful ACF. So there's not many spikes outside um, significant spikes. There's one here, remember, but there is a probability of type one error. Hence, this looks very close to white noise. Um, hence, this data um, is, is is stationary. So, differencing helps to stabilize the mean. The difference series is the change between each observation and the original series. So, y t dash as a showed before is yt minus yt minus one. Now with difference time series, we can only have t minus one values as we cannot calculate y1 dash. The first difference value we can calculate is y2 dash, which will be y2 minus y1. Now, sometimes taking a first order difference is not enough to stabilize um, the, the mean. Hence, we may want to take a second order difference, hence, Assuming that yt dash is yt minus yt minus one, taking a second order difference uh, will look like this. Now, in yt double dash will have uh, t minus two values. Um, so we can only take the y3 here because that y3 minus 2y2 plus y1. Um, and also, in practice, it is even taking second order difference is quite rare. It is almost never needed to go beyond second order differences. I've never had to do that. 
Um, with seasonal data, seasonal differencing can help us stabilize the mean as well and also deal with the seasonality. Hence, this is the difference between um, YT and the observation uh, of the same uh, season the year previous. Okay, so YT minus YT minus M, where M is the number of seasons. So more exclusively for monthly data, M is equal to 12. For quarterly data, M is equal to four. So seasonally differenced quarterly data will equal to YT minus YT minus four. So I take the difference between Q1 this year and Q1 last year. For monthly data, I'll take the difference between January this year and January last year. Hence, um, since I'm taking um, the difference between M observations, I will only have T minus M observations available. And so for the first, I will miss out data for the first uh, year. Let's have a look at a couple of examples. So we're going to go into PBS Sybil and filter by the ATC2 category A10, um, summarize over the different types of customers and um, uh, scale this to a million by dividing by a million just to um, have a, a, a better plotting uh, on the on the y-axis. So let's have a plot of the data. Clearly, this is non-stationary in many possible ways. So the variance increases as the level increases is the first thing we need to deal with. And to deal with that, we'll use a transformation. So we'll take a log transformation and it seems that um, that stabilizes the variance quite nicely. Um, of course, this remains non-stationary because we still have trend and seasonality. Now, let's deal with a seasonal component. And for the seasonally, for the seasonal component, we're going to take seasonal differences. Hence, our difference now is uh, of order 12. So it's yt minus yt minus 12. So I'm taking differences every 12 observations. Now, when I look at the resulting time series, it looks fairly stationary. Um, in subsequent sections of the book, we'll um, look at more formally testing whether such data is stationary or not. At the moment, let's say that uh, we are happy with this and we'll consider this stationary and we'll go on and model it. Let's have a look at a second example. Again, from the PBS Sybil, now we're going to extract the HO2, ATC2 category uh, data. And again, we sum over uh, all customer types or um, patient types and, and scale. So here's a plot of this data. Again, it seems um, that the variance is increasing with the level of the data. Hence, we're going to take a log transformation. And that looks that it works quite well in order in stabilizing the variance. Um, but still, the data is non-stationary. It has a seasonal component and a training component. Hence, let's take a seasonal difference. And now we sort of see different trending behavior. Hence, we might consider this data not to be stationary yet. So the next thing we do is now take a first order difference. So it is a seasonal difference followed by a first difference. And now the data looks fairly stationary. We are satisfied. Now notice that um, the seasonally difference data is closer to being stationary. Um, to make sure that that data is stationary, if we're not sure, we'll that seasonal difference will be followed by a first order difference. Hence, um, our yt dash, which if we denote that to be the seasonal difference, we're going to take a first order difference and the resulting time series yt star is equal to this operation down here. Now, when we have both seasonal and first, when we have seasonality and we think we're going to, and we're going to take a seasonal difference, the seasonal difference, as you saw in the first example, may deal with the mean as well as the seasonal component. Hence, we suggest always taking a first difference, a seasonal difference first, followed by a first difference. Now, it does not make a difference which order you make this. If you take, if you do the first order difference first and then the seasonal difference, 
the resulting um, different series is identical. And I think I've got, yes, I'll show you this in, in this slide. So if I take a first order difference first, and then I follow that first order difference by seasonal difference, I end up with the same operation. However, when I take a seasonal difference first, it accounts for the seasonal component, but it also sometimes may account for the mean. Hence, we don't need to take a first order difference. Hence, our recommendation is to always take a seasonal difference first and then a first order difference if you need to. Now, um, if we are using differences, it is important that the differences need to be interpretable. First differences are the change between one observation and the next. Seasonal differences are the change between one year to the next. It does not make sense to take differences um, lag or in lag or on lag three or taking lag three differences for yearly data. For example, the result, uh, the resulting uh, model uh, is not going to be uh, you're not going to be able to give it any interpretation. <clears throat> 